Hello everyone. Take a look over here. We have a thermal drain that is installed in an equal flow configuration. It is located on the main drain stack of the home. We are going to collect some data using a thermal camera and do a bit of math to see how the unit compares to its CSA's verified efficiency. Taking a closer look at the label, we can see that this is a thermal drain model TDH3480B. It is CSA B55.1 verified to 51% efficiency at 9.5 liters per minute or 2.5 gallons per minute. It is also CSA B55.2 certified for use with potable water. The Natural Resources Canada website has a drain water heat recovery database where we can verify the energy efficiency ratings and energy recovery rates. The thermal drain unit we are looking at today is listed here. It clearly states that it is a 51% efficient unit and it has an energy recovery rate of 9.6 kilowatts or 33,000 BTU. There are three ways to hook up the preheated water outlet of the thermal drain. Option one is the way our thermal drain is hooked up and that is that the thermal drain outlet feeds the cold of the shower and the cold inlet of the hot water heater. A cold water branch off the main is connected to the bottom inlet of the thermal drain. Hot water from the shower will flow down the drain. This hot water passes through the thermal drain and the waste heat energy will be transferred to the incoming cold water flowing through the outside coils of the thermal drain. The warm water from the thermal drain is then sent to the cold inlet of the hot water heater and the cold inlet of the shower. The cool drain water exits the thermal drain and the home through the main drain stack. This is the same idea as scenario one with the exception that the preheated water from the thermal drain is going to the cold water side of the shower only. We are no longer feeding the cold inlet of the hot water heater. Note that this is the second most efficient way of hooking up the thermal drain and will perform to 89% of the unit's rated efficiency. For example, on the unit we are testing, if it were to be hooked up in this method, cold water preheat to the shower, the efficiency of the entire system would be 45.4% versus scenario one where it would perform at the full rated efficiency of 51%. Again, this is the same idea as scenario one with the exception that the preheated water from the thermal drain is only going to the cold inlet of the hot water heater and not to the cold side of the shower. Again, Note that this is the third most efficient way of hooking up the thermal drain and will perform to 79% of the unit's rated efficiency of 51%. The efficiency of this setup would be 40.3% versus scenario one, where it would perform at the unit's full potential of 51% efficiency and scenario two, where it was 45.4%. Using our thermal imaging camera, we noted the drain temperature of the water at the drain. Since this home's shower is 25 feet from the thermal drain, we will not use it for our calculations. The thermal drain incoming cold water is measuring at 10.6 degrees Celsius or 51.1 degrees Fahrenheit with the thermal camera. We will record this number and use it as part of our calculations. The top of the thermal drain pipe is measuring 33.4 degrees Celsius or 92.1 degrees Fahrenheit. This is conservative given that the coil is cooling the entire thermal drain. We will use this number anyways as our shower temperature inlet at the thermal drain. The unit's efficiency is 51% as noted previously. The recoverable energy is the delta T between the cold and the drain water entering the thermal drain multiplied by the unit's percentage efficiency. Here we have 11.6 degrees Celsius or 20.9 degrees Fahrenheit. If we add this to the 10.6 degrees Celsius or 51.1 degree Fahrenheit cold temperature inlet of the thermal drain, we will get a theoretical temperature outlet from the thermal drain of 22.2 degrees Celsius or 72 degrees Fahrenheit. As per the thermal camera readings, we can observe that the numbers line up with what we had calculated. In closing, we are definitely not disappointed with the performance of this thermal drain unit. It is also important to note that this unit has been in service for well over a year. Thank you for watching this video and subscribe to this channel for more educational thermal drain videos.